Zion Williamson made a guest appearance, surprise appearance, on Gilbert Arenas' podcast. Um, and he talked about his struggles with eating or with his diet, which may have contributed to his inability to stay on the court. Here he is. Is it hard to diet at your age? Uh, she's Be honest. Since it's you, I'll be real. Uh, there are times when I will say that, man, that shit hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard. It's hard, man. Like you, twenty, twenty-two, got a lot of money. All the, it feel like all the money in the world, man. It, it is hard, but uh, I'm at that point now where because of certain things, I'm putting back like the wisdom around me. A bunch mm-hmm. of like I don't want to say older because they take offense <laughs> to it. <laughs> and I'm just putting people around me with wisdom, put me on game to certain things, and just go from there, though. Look, I'm not going to demolish. Zion for that. He was honest, so I give him credit for being honest. And if you listen to a lot of that interview, you know, he he admitted to really needing to make some changes, you know, and um, learning from these first few years where he really hasn't been able to play a lot. Um, but he has said that there's a lot of things he could have done better. Uh, in fact, here's a quote, uh, one of the quotes he says, Like Coach K taught me, I have to own up to my responsibilities. Uh, There are a lot of things I could have done better. I didn't. I'm in the process of fixing those things. So I like it. Um, I like his – hopefully this is sincere. But I like it if he's, you know, willing to do this. Because to be honest, Ephraim, we don't see a lot of athletes, I don't think, willing to say something like that. Uh, Unless they're in dire straits. And obviously, they like a John Morant had to say it. And then he he didn't mean it because obviously he didn't change his ways that first time. Hopefully, he does it now. But, um, you know, I've heard athletes say, I have no regrets. I never regret anything because I learned from everything. I mean, look, if you're a human being, you got some regrets. I've lived a good life. I'm I'm not bashing myself. But there's things I've done that I regret. You know what I mean? I, I think we're all human, and, and we should be able to admit that. So I give him credit for that. What I will say is this. Um, he's got to get serious. And hopefully what he says is what he means. Because if he he has the ability to be an all-time great player, Ephraim. I mean, when he plays, he is nothing short of dominant, period. And he had that team near the top of the Western Conference when he was healthy last year, 27.78 rebounds a game, shoots a high percentage, 60-plus percent, can bring the ball up like a point guard at times. Um, But the guys that fulfill their potential, Ephraim, are guys that really take it seriously. Charles Barkley talks about how Moses Malone pushed him to lose 50 pounds. Remember, he came out, he was the round mound of rebound, the leaning tower of pizza. I mean, he was all these, you you know, like nicknames um, about his weight. And he lost that weight. And people still think of him as like he was chunky. But if you look at him in his prime, you know this, Ephraim, he was put together well. He wasn't It was chunky. a brick house. Right, absolutely. And so he did that. LeBron is freaking 38 years old, has accomplished as uh, we we all, most of us think he's either the second best, something, the first best player ever. And he still is working his tail off. I mean, when he's accomplished all this other stuff. And so Zion, if he's going to follow LeBron, as he said, I'm going to follow that blueprint, then good for him. But the time to do that was yesterday. So he's a little behind because maybe he hasn't done those things. And so hopefully he means it and he's about to buckle down. Well, let me tell you this. The money is too big. It's too much money too fast for these young men. He would, the, the, the thing that I took from that interview is it feels like I have all the money in the world. So a 21, 22-year-old, he had got to remember he had a ninety million dollar shoe contract before he got drafted. You want to talk about all the money in the world? You feel like you can do anything. 
And that is counterproductive when you're trying to be great at something. And because that's what, LeBron had that too. Because normally you're talking about outliers. Okay? When you speak of LeBron and the Jordans and the Kobe's, okay. these are outliers. So you can't hold the rest of the league to that standard because they're special. That's a reason they're talked about as being the greatest ever. We're just talking about you becoming a professional athlete, right? And and living up to your potential, which he hasn't done. The right. discipline it takes off the court is more important than your discipline on the court. You only play. You're only out there playing for 48 minutes. Right? 40, right? The rest of your life is happening off the court. Right. right. What you do with your homeboys, John ja Morant. What you do at the fast food restaurant or at home in the kitchen, Zion Williamson. What you do in the bedroom and others, Zion. That's where the discipline is, is, is most needed. Basketball becomes, you're great at that. This kid has been a sensation since he was 12, 13 years old because of social media. Everybody in the world knew who he was. He goes to Duke and he said Coach K had taught him some things. He's just been a kid who's been great at basketball. He went to college for one year. How much can you learn in a couple months? Even if your your coach or your mentor is, is someone like Coach K, you can right. only learn so much. He landed in the NBA as the number one pick in the draft with a truckload of money and all his dreams and prayers answered. So now what? So now what? Let and if you don't you wait, this. hold on. If you don't have people in place, if you don't have a real legitimate circle then it is this is not irregular this th- it, this will happen to you because everybody loves what the money and the fame has to offer in your circle but if you don't have somebody to be like look and i was very critical of new orleans and and their staff for not getting him a live-in chef not giving him a, a nutritionist right you have to be able to monitor and watch your investment because he's a child. He should have definitely had all of that. Staff. It should have been a requirement. Question. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing, Rock, uh, Ephraim, like his eating should not be a problem. And I get it. I'm not saying beignets, gumbo, jump. That's from where I'm from. So I know all that. And I know it's tempting. But you know how it is. I often say this, some, somewhat serious, somewhat joking. If I could have a live-in chef, oh, number one I could thing. be a vegan. Number one thing right now. Well, you are. I know you've gone vegan, yeah. but I, I could be a vegan, right? If Because they know how to cook it up where it's tasty. Everything you and need. And if they're doing it for you, so his diet, there, and I, look, I give him credit for being honest. But there's no excuse. That's the discipline I'm talking about, right? You got $100 million in the bank. Of course, I, my house is going to have a guest house. My chef is going to be there. Right. I'm right. not anything I'm eating at home, he's preparing or she's preparing. Period. It's going to taste great. It's going to yes. be exactly you what I need. You miss the other stuff. When I'm rehabbing, when I'm injured, I'm not going to put on 15, 20, 25 pounds because I don't have the discipline enough to eat properly because I can't work out. That's what I'm talking about. You got to be able to go, to go into these kids' lives if you've invested that amount of capital into them in in them and you got to be able to guide them and give them that guidance to where they don't become a detriment to themselves. So let me ask you this cuz you've seen I'm sure you've seen guys who live it up, party with the girls, all that stuff, right? but yet are able to have that discipline. Is that, how do, like, like how do guys do that? You know, where they still have their fun and all that, but they also are disciplined enough to not let it affect their, their game. Very difficult to do it as a young player. Very difficult, especially now. 
So are you saying, do most of the young superstars, regardless of the sport, but we're mainly talking football and basketball, the guys that are young superstars, are they not out there, you know, kicking it, living it up to the maximum or, you know, at least to a, a large degree in your mind? They are, but the job comes first. I've seen guys, Floyd is a perfect example, Floyd Mayweather, right? If you, we're, we're doing a documentary on Floyd right now. Oh. Uh, so we, 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 we have a lot of access to stuff. Floyd parties to do all that. He will train at five o'clock in the morning. Mm. He'll go have some burgers and all of that. We've seen it on 24 seven and then fight 360 right. or whatever. And then he'll go and train. He never let his lifestyle outside of the ring affect his training and being ready for inside of the ring. I'm not saying you can't go party, you can't have a good time, you can't go to the club, but that's not your job. That's not your livelihood. You can go to the club and you can but if you get up at four or, or five in the morning and go work out, okay, now we working. Right, right. You have I, to be able it, to do that. It boils down to and and we've said this in a lot of different circumstances. Do you love the game mm. or do you love what, what the it brings? Get you. Yep. Right? And that's the if you really love the game, like a LeBron James or somebody like, like that. Like a Kobe Floyd, Bryant. Like, right. Like, like no a matter Kevin what you Garnett. accomplish, you're gonna work your tail off. If you just love what it brings, then once the it once you get that stuff, the women, it's no the money, yep. the fame, the material, right. Like you're not you're going to lose sight. Of the main thing. I don't know Zion, but watching him and his weight fluctuate and all the things that's going on with him in, on social media and, you know, all the – I don't know if, if, if you know what's, what's, what's out there. It's, it's out of control, right? Right, right. Uh, to me, that doesn't scream, I'm in the lab. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> I'm getting right. I'm trying to play all 82 next year. Right. I, that doesn't scream that to me. No, no. So I, 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 all I can do is, you know who I, I loved watching Kevin Garnett play because you knew he loved basketball. Absolutely. I loved watching Kobe Bryant play because you knew he loved basketball. And when you listen to his contemporaries and they say, hey, I got up at 6 o'clock to come down to work out, and Kobe was already sweating, dripping. Right. Right, right. eating Team breakfast because he's been down there since 4 a.m. He done already got a right. workout in. You right. thought you were coming to get one in, and he's all, he ready for number two. So let me ask you this before we throw it out to the callers. Um, do you think – it's obviously not too late chronologically, but do you think the fact that th he's about to be five years in now and he's just coming to this revelation – if if we're giving him the benefit of the doubt that he is, and he's not just saying it, do you think that that it kind of shows that yeah, it really ain't in you? Oh, it definitely does show it. It's not in you, but he can change all of that. His abilities alone, if you put some discipline behind those abilities that his God given abilities, it's a wrap, brother. He will take the league by storm. Yeah, he, but he, it's uh, hard to do it when you're sitting on 200 mil. <laughs> it's hard right. to do it. 